Well, Jamala Shayal joins us here in the studio for more on this story. You've, of course, covered uh, Egypt uh, extensively in the past. Jamal, even though there have been attacks, of course, on churches before, does this one take the violence to a new level? Well, I mean, it's certainly uh, a ghastly attack um, that has come in a... It's caught everyone by surprise. This is almost six years to the day since another massive attack on the Two Satan's Church in Alexandria. If we remember on New Year's Eve in 2010, it was a huge attack. It was still the last days of the Mubarak regime. But ever since then, attacks have decreased and definitely those that have taken place haven't taken place the same scale. What's significant about this attack, Sami, is it's in the heart of Cairo. Abbasiyah is a known uh, a focal point for some of the biggest churches in uh, Egypt. So for something like this to happen is a stark reminder of uh, how vulnerable uh, some of the religious places are in Egypt. Why and are we seeing this sort of resurgence then, Jamal? Well, that's anyone's guess. I mean, unfortunately, the situation with Egypt is security has become so bad in the country ever since the coup, primarily, well, since the revolution, but even worse, since uh, Abdel Fattah Sisi came. And the irony of it, he came on a, on a ticket of security. We suddenly see that there are attacks in Arish and uh, uh, attacks in the Sinai province. In Cairo, the day before, it's important to note, Samuel, on Saturday, 24 hours just before this attack, there was a huge bomb outside a police station in Haram, which killed around 20-odd uh, people as well. And it seems that the security security forces are overwhelmed because while they're busy rounding up and arresting journalists and uh, political activists, the actual militants or those with guns and weapons uh, are being left to roam freely and attack as they wish. It's definitely stirring the pot and I understand a group of talk show hosts got a very, shall we say, unfriendly welcome when they tried to show up outside the church, right? Indeed, these are uh, considered to be government mouthpieces, so like Lamis al-Hadid, we'll see now on uh, screen, uh, they are talk show hosts who constantly peddle pro government uh, ideas and when they came to report outside it the anger obviously was too much to bear for the mourners and the victims uh, there and they took it out on them and what's interesting about this is that it's not a manifestation of their opposition to these talk show hosts in so much as it's a manifestation of their opposition to the government because you do not have the ability to dissent freely in Egypt now so when there is an opportunity like uh, what has arose over the past 24 hours you truly find uh, the opposition of the Egyptian public manifesting itself. Well, in these it is very key when you see that coming from Coptic Egyptian circles because there were those Coptic leaders who initially supported the coup against Egypt's first democratically elected president and were cheering for Sisi. Indeed, what, I mean, when, when Sisi came and he issued the uh, coup decree, so to speak, on July 3rd, he had the uh, leaders of the Coptic Church sitting next to him announcing it, and for a very long time they have been peddling it and supporting it as well. But this is also indicative of all sections of Egyptian society, which is the leaders or the figures or the icons of the society are in one place and the masses are in somewhere else. So the Coptic community are the same as the Muslim community who can't find jobs, who can't find uh, uh, enough money to eat, whose education system is terrible, uh, who are being suppressed because of their political views. So when they have the opportunity to express themselves or when that containment suddenly isn't there, you see this overspill and you see the true manifestation of the popularity or lack thereof of the regime. All right. Thanks so much, Jamal Shayal.